Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Trader Talk with our friend Charting Man Dan. How are you going, Dan? Very good. How are you doing, Alex? Pretty good, mate. So it's consensus week and there's been a lot of talk leading up to it. So we'll talk about the way we think that this is going to maybe play out and the psychology and what are you sort of seeing in general and seeing on the charts as it relates to consensus? Well, my approach is always one day at a time. So it's hard for me to look at an event and say, oh, you know, I need to buy in because this is going to happen. But that's essentially what the market does, where it begins to price in these known events. When the date of an event is known, the market can price it in. And so if the price is going up into an event, that's the market pricing in some bullish news. There's a little bit of a different scenario this time where we did have that dump on the daily time frame leading up into the event. And because of that, I thought, well, maybe we'll see some upside because of that reason. But there are people that are comparing it to the last few years, which is a good thing to do. You want to go back and look historically what has happened, but you also need to do it in an unbiased way. If you look back last year and say, oh, man, Ethereum ran you know, X percent in these three days. So we're going to be looking for that to happen the same this year. But you ignore the fact that Ethereum was in blue sky breakout last year at the start of a crazy hype year. And here we have plenty of resistance. You know, we've seen uh, a lot of contained trading where Bitcoin can't go, you know, 20 percent in a day without very significant news, in my opinion. So to have these, you know, large expectations and people want their clickbait titles of, you know, Bitcoin could go 70 percent during consensus. It's just not something that I buy into. If news comes out that the market doesn't know about, we will see a really bullish reaction. But other than that, just take it one day at a time and let the charts tell us what's going on. And right now, the daily charts are not entirely strong. We're seeing a nice oversold bounce from on the shorter term time frames the last couple of days. But in terms of you know a significant breakout or any clear levels that the bulls could break to, it's it's not really a clear a point like it was last year. So important to do it in an unbiased way and not you know let your hopes and dreams skew what you your plan is yeah yeah i think you, i was watching maybe one of your updates might have even been this morning and i think you said that if you're new to trading there's a lot of these trades that don't have clear direction at the moment and you should sit on the sidelines and that's kind of been a theme as well for us in terms of swing trading for the past few months a lot of the time there hasn't been any clear direction and in terms of consensus i think it's a case of um when everyone's talking about something, they already have it priced in and you need more people to go, oh, you know, oh, consensus is on and that's going to cause a buy. Now, that's not going to happen if the vast majority of people are already talking about consensus. And, and this is a theme we see over and over again in other coins. People are saying at the moment, there's a lot of small coins having reasonably good announcements, but they're not getting any price movement. And it's because, you know, the market isn't as euphoric as a whole the little coins aren't just going to go up because they have good pockets of announcements here and there. And I think it's something that people are starting to get frustrated with. And it comes back to that, that big chart of where are we in the scheme of things. And it's that people that are getting frustrated and leaving the market. And that is often the very end of that Elliott wave, that sentiment Wall Street cheat sheet that we see posted online a lot. So it's exciting for the people that understand the fundamentals and understand that there's good news happening in little pockets and it's not necessarily causing the price to run that maybe you know we're on the cusp of something special in the coming months i believe yeah i mean for me it's really all about i've been talking about it for months but the weekly equilibrium pattern is just a tightening chart on bitcoin it was very similar to the s p 500 and very similar to the canadian mj market that i'm looking at they all had weekly equilibriums the S&P 500 and WED both already broke bullish in the last two weeks. WED broke bullish today. But uh, Bitcoin, like I said, like you had a good point. If when you're in a, an equilibrium and you get to a range that's tighter and tighter and tighter, it gets more and more choppy. The moves are less clear and you wait for the break of the equilibrium. And when that happens, you usually get significant follow through on that time frame. So if we get a bull break on the weekly equilibrium for Bitcoin, I'm going to be looking for you know, the rest of the summer into the fall to be bullish in the space. And that would be a much bigger catalyst, in my opinion, than something like consensus. If the technicals of the chart and like I said, the lack of or the, the increase in resistance compared to last year need to break those levels with a clear technical break, which isn't going to happen for another couple of weeks at the earliest, in my opinion. Yeah. I think just going off the macro and everything that's happening around us, I think we break bullish and I just can't see us having a bear run, as you say, into the fall and, and for months on end. I just Unless there's something really catastrophically bad in terms of news, I think we're going to break bullish eventually. 
Um, other thing I wanted to get your thoughts on was people that love their coins and hate on other coins. So something that very much changed my perspective in the early days was when I was reading about Ethereum. A lot of people were hating on Ethereum. There was Bitcoin maximalists out there saying this is, you know, this is nothing. This is never going to work. And I kind of had to go against the herd a bit to say I believe there's something here. And again, now I think I've added a bit more EOS to my portfolio yesterday. And people say, oh, how can you, how can you like both? And something that's very clear to me online is people that get fixated on one coin or another. Um, do you have thoughts on all that sort of thing? Definitely. It was it was a pet peeve of mine when I first started making videos. I bet you could go back and watch my first 10 videos and see me talk about this because it it bothered me. The, the, the way that people are focusing, not only bringing each other or bringing each other's coins down, but the wasted energy, debating with people and constantly infighting, that tells me you have too much time on your hands. If you can constantly you know do back and forth on YouTube comments trying to put somebody else's coin down, when you could be researching and learning more and developing new skills or so many more productive things rather than the negativity that people do latch onto. And and it doesn't help the space. It's definitely a negative thing. So maybe another example is, let's say the Australian mining space, or you're very familiar with Canadian MJ. If there was large institutions and, and their, their lower downs are looking to do research online, if everything they were reading was bickering about this space, it's kind of like, well, are we going to put our money here? So if people are reading about crypto and they're a bit tentative about whether or not they should invest and all they see is bickering online, I just think it's not healthy for the space as a whole. Oh, I absolutely agree. I mean, the whole BTC, BCH debacle, not even going to get into it, but that is a very big hindrance. Not sure that's a word, but sounds good. It, it hinders the the entire space when there's that kind of infighting. Again, like you said, someone comes online and, and starts to do their research and they come across this and they are instantly extremely confused about what's going on and why is there this argument and what what are forks and what does all this mean? So we have to keep in mind that if we want widespread adoption, things need to be clear and simple for a mainstream uh, average Joe investor or trader to get into this space. And infighting is not the way to do it. And it's definitely, again, the, the Twitter space on, on crypto needs to shape up a little bit, in my opinion, again, to be more friendly. We can all be on the same team to a certain degree. Yes, coins do have competing you know, uh, fundamentals, but in general, it is definitely important. Don't fall in love with your coin. That's the biggest point. Things are going to change and maybe the coin you love now isn't going to be the coin you love in two years. Do not fall in love with your coin and project. Have an exit plan. If things change, even if the trend changes, have an exit plan and you can re-enter lower if you still love the project. It's just important to keep the emotion out of it. And that's what it all boils down to, yeah. people putting their emotions in the game. Yeah, and having look, looking back on it now compared to what it was like a few years ago in that Bitcoin Ethereum debate, it's almost you know um, abnormal now for people not to own a bit of Bitcoin and Ethereum. It's a given that they're the big two, you own a bit of both and all that sort of thing. So you've got to ask yourself if you own a smaller coin, if, if the landscape generally changes, the macro for that coin, are you in love with it or are you going to sell it and never think about it again and buy the coin that's surpassed it in whatever industry it's in and all that? All that sort of thing. So I think that's maybe a good place to wrap up. Dan, any final thoughts there? That's all I got for now. Definitely watching the weekly equilibrium for Bitcoin and looking for the next month to get real interesting. And hopefully between our two channels, we can give reasonably unbiased uh, opinions on the fundamentals and the technicals of all the coins out there. Absolutely. Always appreciate your opinion. Cool. Thanks, Dan. See ya.